Hello, and welcome to the Arts Alliance webinar on the Illinois Department of Commerce and Economic Opportunities Back to Business New Business Grant Program. My name is Megan Lewis, and I will be presenting this webinar along with my colleague, Jonna Schultz. The New Biz Grant Program is currently underway, accepting applications from eligible businesses and nonprofits in Illinois. Our webinar today is designed specifically to help the creative sector in Illinois access these grant funds. We'll be providing you with both the basic information needed to apply, addressing the application process and required documentation, and assistance with some of the specific questions that have already been raised by others in the creative sector about this program. And we've set aside time at the end for your questions. Hopefully we'll address them during the webinar, but please feel free to pop them into the Q&A as we go. So before we dive into the presentation, we wanna briefly go over the Alliance's role in this program. So as many of you know, Arts Alliance Illinois is a statewide nonprofit organization that fights for art resources and policies that benefit its members and all Illinois residents. Our membership is composed of artists, art educators, arts advocates, nonprofit arts and cultural organizations, and for-profit arts businesses. The Arts Alliance team that is focused on connecting creatives with public funding includes Casey Smith, our Director of Programs and Special Projects, Jonna Schultz and myself, the public funding navigators, and our external partners, Chris Johnson with Lawyers for the Creative Arts and Jillian Gora with BDO, Nonprofit and Grantmaker Advisory Services. The Alliance is one of nearly 100 DCEO community navigators across the state. Many of them focus on specific geographic areas within Illinois. Arts Alliance is focused on the creative sector across the entire state. And as part of this role, the Alliance maintains a help desk where you can submit questions about a specific funding, public funding opportunity like New Biz or access resources to help grow your creative business or nonprofit. We plan to expand our general support services this year, 2024, when we also intend to launch a series of informational business and nonprofit webinars to help further strengthen the arts and culture sector. Presently, we are focusing our resources on the DCO New Biz program. So Let's get started. The intent of New Biz is to provide grants to help compensate eligible businesses or nonprofits for losses or expenses incurred due to the COVID pandemic. They are to be used for business or nonprofit operating expenses. The New Biz grant program involves three organizations. First is the Illinois Department of Commerce and Economic Opportunity, or DCEO, which is the grant making entity. DCO has $25 million in American Rescue Plan funds that it is making available to new businesses and nonprofits that launched between January 1, 2020 and December 31, 2021 in industries most impacted by the pandemic. Lendistry is the third-party entity that is managing the grant applications. They are a minority-led small business lender that also provides loans to small businesses as well as support government and private grant programs. And Arts Alliance Illinois is a statewide partner to DCEO, providing specific support to the creative sector through our help desk and via weekly meetings with DCEO. Now I'm gonna pass it over to Jana, who will review the grant award amounts, eligibility criteria, and the priority arts industries. Thanks, Megan. So grant amounts for the new biz grants range from $5,000 to $30,000. The amounts vary depending on whether you're a brick and mortar or a home-based business or nonprofit, and when you started that business or nonprofit. The highest amount, $30,000, is for brick and mortar businesses that started during the first six months of 2000, 2020. That amount goes down to $20,000 for the second half of 2020, and then to 10,000 for all of 2021. For home-based businesses, those that started in the first six months of 2020 qualify for $10,000. This goes down to 5,000 for the second half of 2020, and there are no awards available for home-based businesses that started in 2021. One question that we've gotten already is the definition of brick and mortar. DCEO defines brick and mortar as an entity that operates primarily out of one or more commercial or industrial facilities, which they are the tenant or the owner. So it doesn't matter whether you rent or own, 
all you need to do is be able to provide proof of location. The start date is the date that was recorded on the business articles of incorporation or on the business license, if one is required. For a nonprofit, it's the date on the IRS determination letter. When it comes to eligibility, the new BIS grant has some very specific criteria. In addition to the date when the operation started, which we just covered, your business or nonprofit has to have had gross receipts, which is the revenue before any deductions are taken, of at least $25,000 and no more than 20 million in 2021. They have to currently be in operation in Illinois and they cannot have received a business interruption grant, the back to business grants before 2023. So that does not include the B2B arts grants that were very recent, the shuttered venue operators grant, from the US Small Business Administration or the Restaurant Revitalization Funds. Also, you have to have either operate in a DCEO priority industry or be a business that is majority owned by someone who received unemployment business, unemployment benefits from March the 12th of 2020 to the date when the business started, which is no later than December 31st of 2021. So the list of priority industries for this grant program is quite long, but within that list, there are six industries that are specifically connected to the creative sector. This slide shows the high level description of each category, but there are specific details, caveats, and requirements for each one. The first is the live venue operators or promoters. This includes theatrical producers, live performing or organization operators, and talent representatives that were eligible for but did not receive a shuttered venue operator grant. The second are the performing or presenting arts organizations. And this includes those with the primary mission or integral to the primary mission, the performance or presentation of art to the public, including dance, film, literary arts, media arts, music, theater, and visual arts. Arts education organizations include those with a primary mission or integral to their primary mission, the provision of arts learning, or those that have more than 50% of their business activity related to arts education. Service providers and organizations for the arts focus on businesses that provide services primarily to the arts sector, including vendors in design, sound, equipment rental, preparation, casting, hair and makeup, talent management, booking, photography or videography, and printing, and service organizations for the arts sector that provide professional services like training and technical assistance. It's important to note that if you have more than 50% of your earned revenue coming from these activities or services, which can include art events, performances, and exhibits. Spectator and social service, social event services, which can include hair and makeup, caterers, photographers, videographers, promoters, event planners, florists, and printers. Along with these service providers, remember that more than 50% of your earned revenue must come from the arts sector. Finally, museums and movie theaters. These were eligible for a shuttered venues grant, operators grant, but did not receive one. You can see the full list of priority industries at the B2B new biz site under priority industry definitions. And now I'm gonna hand it back to Megan, who will go over the required documentation, how to start your application and tips for a smooth application process. Thanks, Jonna. So for the application itself, there are only a few pieces of information that are required for everyone. First is the applicant certification. This is an online form that you will fill out and sign where you self-certify the truthfulness and accuracy of the information you provide in the application and supporting documents for the business or nonprofit for which you are applying. You'll need to print out the certification, sign it, and then upload it in the PDF format. Next is a government issued photo ID. This you will provide via Persona, which is a third party platform that's embedded in the application that helps prevent fraud. You'll upload a picture of your government issued ID and then take a selfie with a device with a front facing camera. DCO has guidance on their website for best practices for taking your picture. 
Third is the documentation that shows the date that your business or organization was established. And you can use one of the different documents that's shown here on this slide to demonstrate that date. And if you're a sole proprietor, you may not have this documentation. We will address that later in this webinar. And the final item you need to provide is your 2021 tax return, either your federal business tax return or your 990 if you're a nonprofit. In addition to these required documents, you may need to also provide proof of tax exemption if you're a nonprofit, proof of location if applying as a brick and mortar business or a nonprofit, and professional license if that's applicable to your industry. And please note that Lendistry may contact you if they have questions about any of the documents you provide or if they need additional information. And they may contact you by email, phone, or text. So just be aware that you should be looking out for that. So starting an application is very easy. You just go to www.b2bnewbiz.com and you select apply from the menu. And then you'll be sent to Lendistry's site. And there you'll create a new account where, you're, where you will enter the primary email address used by the owner of the entity applying. And then you just go ahead and get started. You can save and come back later to the application. Just note, that each time you'll need to sign in using multi-factor authentication for security reasons. So you'll need to have the phone with the mobile number you used in the application to receive a confirmation code. And you can sign back in anytime to see the status of your application. Remember that Lendistry is there to help you with creating or accessing your application portal. And the Alliance Help Desk can also help troubleshoot for you. So here are a few tips for making the application process go as smoothly as possible. First, it's recommended that you use Google Chrome as your browser and that you be sure to clear your cache use incognito mode and disable your pop-up blocker. And there's detailed instructions on how to do all of these on the B2B site under tips for applying. Save all the documents you need to upload in PDF format and put them into a separate folder so that you can easily find them for either uploading or dragging and dropping into the application. Use an email address that you check regularly. Make sure that you spell it correctly. Uh, do not use info at contact.com or no reply.com addresses. They won't be accepted. Make note of your security questions and answers and the application number that you receive when you start your application. This will help ensure you can access your application after you've started it. Now, we've learned from Lendistry that people seem to be stopping at the identity verification and document upload stages. So if you get stuck at either of these places, please reach out to the help desk and we can help you through those items. Remember that you will not be able to click submit until all of the required documents have been uploaded and identity verification has been made. Jana is now gonna address some of the questions that we've already received at the help desk. Thanks, Megan. So the Alliance has received some questions that are particularly relevant across the creative sector. And they in include determining the amount of gross receipts for 2021 and whether you're considered a sole proprietor. And then how do you demonstrate that? Thanks, so after the start date for your business or nonprofit, the second piece of information needed is the amount of money that was earned in 2021. Gross receipts is the money that was made from any adjustments before any adjustments or deductions are applied. The particular line for each on each type of tax return is noted by the blue arrows. So if you're a sole proprietorship, you'll find this on your Schedule C, line one. If you're in a partnership, you'll find this on line 1A of form 1065. If you're a corporation filing a form 1120 or an S corp filing a form 1120 S, you will find this on line number 1A, which we highlighted with the blue arrows. If you're a nonprofit, you will find the same information on line 12 of your 990, or if you file the 990 EZ, it will be on line L and nonprofits that have a gross receipt of $50,000 or less 
you will find this on your Form 990N e-postcard. Remember that you shall, will be required to upload all of your 2021 tax return. So the number that you provide in the application should match the number of the tax return that you provide. So a lot of folks in the arts are sole proprietors. So we get asked if that means they are a sole proprietorship. And the IRS depend, defines a sole proprietorship as someone who owns an unincorporated business by him or herself. And this could include a side gig, a freelance job, or a new business, just as long as it's just you. Sole proprietors are eligible for the new biz money of $5,000, but the required documentation needs to be addressed in a slightly different way. And you may not have that professional business license or proof of business organization, but that's okay. If you don't have either of those documents, there's a workaround that you can do. For the professional business license, it's not a mandatory requirement. So you can just skip that field in the application. But for the proof of business organization, the application does require that something's uploaded in that field. When a document is required, but there's no information to provide, the best practice is to provide a document that includes an explanation. For example, here you can create and save a PDF that states, proof of business organization is not required for my industry. Save it to that same folder with the other documents to upload and provide it when it's required. And now I'll pass it back to Megan, who will cover the review and approval process. Thanks, Jana. <clears throat> so for the review and approval process, Lendistry is processing applications in the order they're received. After you've completed and submitted your application, the first step is for Lendistry to determine if you meet the minimum eligibility requirements. And please note that this does not mean you will receive an award. It's just the first step. And if they need additional information or documents, they will reach out to you, either by email or phone. And after this step, if an application is fully validated, then Lendistry will contact you to notify you if you've been approved or declined for funding. If you're approved, you will receive a grantee agreement and a W-9 form as DocuSign documents in Lendistry's portal. Initial, sign, and date the documents to be able to receive the funds. If you are declined, you have five days to call customer service and request a re-review. If you haven't contacted them in five days, the determination is considered to be final. If you run into this situation, please contact us at the help desk as well as contact Lendistry. We've, we've helped a few people who've been in this situation. So we may be able to troubleshoot this problem for you. So for more assistance with your application, we recommend that you check out the new biz FAQs on DCO's site and review Lendistry's technical tips for applying. And you can always reach out to us through the help desk. You can submit a ticket 24 seven, but you should expect responses from us during normal business hours. And remember that you can check the status of your application at any time on the Lindustry portal using the username, password, and mobile number with which you registered. You will need to do the multi-factor authentication each time you log in, but then you can see the status of your application on the dashboard. So as we've mentioned, applications are open now, but they're going to close on January 11th at 11.59 p.m. And as I was reminded this morning, that is next Thursday. So we really recommend that you get, if you haven't started your application, that you should get started on it now. So we've set aside uh, about 10 minutes here for any um, questions that we have from the participants. So um, Jana, do we have anything in the Q&A? We actually, we've got a great question in the Q&A. So, and I'll set up for us. So Alexandria has reached out and she asked, my organization incorporated in 2017, but they didn't get their 501c3 until 2001. Are we eligible? This is a great question. So could you re repeat that again? So they, Sure. I mean, oh, they're 501c3 until 2021. You said 2001. Right. Okay. But they incorporated in 2017. Let's see. I I think that they're, they possibly are eligible because 
the IRS determination letter will be dated in 2021. So um, my suggestion is to provide the information that fits the parameters for being eligible and, um, and see how that goes. And if you have any issues with the application, um, you can reach back out to us. I think that's great. Thank you, Megan. Um, yes, Alexandria, please do. She also sent a follow-up and asked, what do I do for a business certificate since the incorporation date is outside of the eligibility, but the 501c3 is not? That's a, a good follow-up as well. What would you yeah. recommend, Megan, based on what we've learned from Lindustry and DCEO? I, 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 my recommendation is to provide only the information that meets the eligibility requirements because we have had others who had their business in one format and then they did change it within the eligibility time. So I would say to, to make sure that you don't provide anything that might consider it to be one that they would kick out is provide just the information for between the Jan 1, 2020 and the December 31, 2021. What do you think, Jonna? I think that's a great idea. And definitely follow up with us in the help desk. If you have any questions, we would be happy to like check with Lendistry or ask that specific question of DCEO and try to get you some more information. Yeah. Yep. And now we have <laughs> um, something in the chat too. So does that yeah, mean that looking, she- I was just looking sorry. at that one about okay. how she should use her 501c3 determination as her business certificate. Yeah, I mean, I think there's a little bit of a mix of terms there because the 501c3, that IRS determination letter is something separate from a business certificate because we're it's we're kind of mixing profit, nonprofit terms. But yeah, I think we've kind of hit this one that using the determination letter would be the right criteria. So great. And Alexandria, thank you. Yeah, I'm glad we were able to help address your question. And uh, yeah, please feel free to submit a ticket to the help desk um, if you need further help with this, because we've um, we found the different ways that we can get in touch with people and help expedite answers to questions. So uh, I don't see anything else. Do you, Jonna? I don't either. I think we've addressed yeah, okay, everything great. we have. And if anybody's listening to this as a recording, please feel free to contact us through the help desk if you have any other questions that have come up from what we've presented here or something else that you've run into. Um, we are going to be manning this right up until the deadline. So please be in touch if you need any help. Thank so you we for hope joining that us this, today. Yeah, we hope this has been helpful for everybody. And um, if you do end up applying to the program, also just if you can let us know that through the help desk ticket, because that would help us be able to track um, how the creative sector has been able to try to access this funding. So um, thanks 